In today's Lightroom night photography video, I'm going to show you how I take this raw file right here and turn it into a photo like this at the end. And what I went ahead and done is stitch together five different raw files right here into a single HDR file with all of the dynamic range. That is just because there are a lot of bright lights, so that way we get the most quality at the end. Alright, so let's jump right into the editing and the first thing that you want to look out for is the blacks and the dark shadows in your picture. Because inevitably you're gonna have them in a night shot and they're very important and play an essential role to the entire dark mood and feel. So what you would have by bringing up the shadows, bring up the blacks like crazy, it looks very washed out, you have detail in everything, it just doesn't work all that well. However, if I would just bring that down again, what I've got is a very large, just completely black area and that's not what I want either. So what I'm actually gonna do here is raise the shadows by quite a bit and also bring up the blacks by a little bit and that will give me some of these dark shadow details that I want but at the same time it does wash out the picture a little bit. So what I would suggest you to do here after that is just bring up the contrast and that will just increase the overall pop of your picture but it will also increase the darkness in some of these dark parts. So if you do that in a reasonable way you will still have that dark atmosphere and mood but you will also have some of these dark shadow details for some additional interest. So from before to after it's already a little bit more interesting. Then the next big thing is obviously the highlights as you're gonna have them almost in all city pictures and here is no exception. And what I would do here in this case is bring down the highlight slider which just affects the very overall and very broad portions of the highlights and that kind of gives you a better starting point, a very, you know, maybe not as exciting starting point, but it does work better from there to bring up the whites. And you want to bring up the whites because it doesn't only affect the highlights themselves, it will also bring up the entire dynamic and, you know, just kind of the brightness of the picture. So you don't want to go overboard with it, as you can see here, but you can also hold down the ALT or ZMD key by the way and you will get this mask. And if you have any other color than black, that means that area is clipped. But honestly, it doesn't matter too much if there are just some small areas clipped as you're not gonna really be able to see any details in these windows or any of these lights anyways. So I'm just gonna bring them up by about, well, 30, 36, something around that line. And from before these whites and after, the entire picture just looks a little bit more you know, punchy, a little bit more interesting if you ask me. So you're definitely gonna have to evaluate that for every single picture differently, but just this kind of workflow with bringing down the highlights and bringing up the whites works pretty well in my experience. Then going down to the tonal curve actually, because I wanna continue with the highlight and dark adjustments first, I am going to bring up the highlight slider right here and what this will do is just bring up the very bright part, so in fact it will just pop these windows even more than before. And it's not a huge difference here, but you might be able to see from before to after, they just seem a little bit brighter and they really just affect the very bright highlights, so it's very different than the highlight slider in the basics. And going down to the lights, this is pretty much a last lights or brightness slider that you have. And with that, you can just kind of make an in-between the highlight slider and the basics adjustments and the white sliders. So it's really kind of confusing with all of these names of the sliders, very similar, but just play around with them, I'd say, is the best idea. And in this case, bringing up the light slider in the tonal curve. So I think that looks pretty interesting, pretty dynamic, while at the same time not being crazily too bright. So then the next two sliders in the tonal curve, they just affect the dark parts and I'm really happy with the dark parts. There are just some very faint details, but there is a little bit of a differentiation and not everything completely black, but might as well also play around with these sliders just a little bit. But I don't think the darks really do anything that I want here nor do the shadows. So you really have to play around with them. Every single picture is obviously different in which slider works to increase or decrease. 
but I think especially with the tonal curve you should mainly look at the highlights and the light slider. So going back up to the basics adjustments, I'm just going to finish up the clarity and in a lot of cases going actually into the minus clarity, if you see here it gives a very different feel compared to the plus clarity. The plus clarity is very harsh, very textured, whereas the minus clarity makes everything seem a little bit hazy and misty, which might be just what you were looking for. But in this case, I do think... Yeah, I do think I'm actually going to go a bit into the plus clarity here and then maybe later on with the local adjustments actually goes over some parts and just add some minus clarity there. And speaking of the global adjustments, the temperature slider is definitely one of the most important of these and what I'm going to do here is just make the entire picture a little bit more bluish and even though I definitely do like some of these warm tones, I do think that an overall bluish picture would work a lot better and that is actually so I can go down into the split toning right here, just go into the highlights, click on the box right there and go into the orange tones. So what you can do here is just individually adjust the color of the highlights. What this means is that if you add a color it will mainly manifest within the highlights so you can see that pretty well with this crazy red tone right here. The foreground is pretty much not adjusted at all but the highlights, especially in the houses, but also here in the cloud, just get affected by the color. And if you go into the orange tones, for example, and not go quite too much, you know, always keep it somewhat natural, and you can see already the difference from before to after. It's really quite nice, and once again, if you would have this color temperature at already very warm, it would just kind of make it way too much together and it would just not work. So that's why I really like to start off with a color temperature that is relatively blue, but then go into the split toning and just add some warm highlight saturation there. Then you can also do the same thing with the shadows. Obviously I would go into a different color and you could go here even crazy into the blue so you get an even bigger differentiation from the highlight tonalities to the shadow tonalities. But honestly, I don't, well, maybe I'm going to add just a little bit of blues, but really not that much. And from before and after the split toning, it does not only make your whole light seem a little bit more natural, but it also increases the differentiation from the blue tones in the shadows to the warm tones in the highlights. And that, of course, brings additional interest as well. So going back up, I think I'm done with the basics as well as the tonal curve. You would have HSL tool where you could fine tune all of the colors and saturations, but it has a very minor impact, so I'm just going to leave that out. Now detail, if you're going to shoot at night, you're probably going to have a lot of noise. In this case, it's not that much because I shot it in an HDR. So let's actually just increase the color slider to 100 and that will get rid of all of the purple and green sensor noise. Definitely a great thing to do. And maybe also add just a little bit of noise reduction because in the foreground you can see a little bit of noise. Just always be very careful if you use the noise reduction slider itself because it will make your picture look a lot less sharp and a lot less detailed. So going back out, maybe even add a little bit of sharpening while holding down the all key with the masking slider and just making sure that none of the dark parts get selected for sharpening as I will just increase the noise in the dark areas. So I think we're getting there and going down into the lens corrections I already removed the chromatic variation as well as the profile corrections. If you haven't done that just click on both options and it will make your picture look a little bit better. Now transform definitely not a thing that I'm gonna worry about here. Effects don't really think I need to do anything. Let's go down and do the camera calibration instead and here you just want to play around with all of these profiles. They will just slightly change your color and highlights and overall look of the picture. So it's very dependent on the photo itself. Just play around with it and at the end stick with whatever you like best. I do think though that everything is a little bit too much so I'm just gonna go with camera neutral. It's not over the top but I like it a little bit better than a dope standard. So going down into the primary color sliders I am going to move around these sliders just real quick. 
And what you can do here, of course, is change around the primary colors. So if you adjust any color, it will also adjust any of the other colors. And if I show you that in the next slider, so you can kind of visualize that a little bit better. If I would adjust the greens like crazy, it will also have an impact on the blues and the reds as they're made out of these colors. But once again, this doesn't really have a huge impact either. And I think I'm going to go quite quick here. Maybe just a little bit more into the, yeah, maybe actually into the minus with the blues. And at the end, I think that should work pretty well. So from before any camera calibration adjustments to after, definitely a bit more fine tuned and I like it a bit better. But as you can see, it's very, you know, small. It's not a very rudimentary adjustment at all. But alright, now that we're done with the global adjustments, here is by the way from before to after, let's go into the local adjustments and really fine tune everything according to my liking. And the first thing I always like to start off with is the graduated filters. So what I'm gonna do is just reset everything here for now. And I do want to create a little bit of a differentiation in the color, not only from the highlights to the shadows, but also in terms of the area of the picture. So I do think I'm just going to add a very big graduated filter over the foreground, just kind of angle it and make sure I have a very soft edge right here and then go into the color and add some more warmth. It's especially visible in the highlights, but the idea here is just to make the foreground seem a little bit warmer, a little bit closer, and then grab another one for the background, this time just with some blues, and also make sure I angle that correctly. And that way I will also get a differentiation in the color from the distance being a little bit more bluish, a little bit colder, whereas the foreground is even more inviting and warm. So that looks pretty good for now. And in terms of the graduated filter, you know what? I actually do have an idea here. So I'm going to reset everything once again. And this time just decrease the overall clarity for a graduated filter that I'm going to add over the sky and the distance. So the idea here is just to create depth and some additional interest from the background being a little bit more hazy, a little bit less clarity, whereas the foreground, and maybe I'm even going to grab another filter for the foreground specifically, while the foreground is more crisp. So yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it there from before any graduated filters. It just looks a little bit more dullish, whereas afterwards, there's definitely a lot more differentiation and complexification, and this is just what these graduated filters are really good for. So after that, I'm going to grab an adjustment brush and go even more into the minus clarity and really just brush over some areas, you know, way in the distance here. Maybe I'm even going to go crazily into the minus, minus 100 even. And, you know, you really don't want to go over too many areas for that. Just somewhere you really want to pronounce this sense of mist and haze. And why not also grab another one, once again, with a little bit less into the minus clarity. And it's really a great thing. You can also, of course, mix that with some of the sky. It's really just kind of an extension of the graduated filter adjustments. So here's from before the adjustment brush, here's after. Um, maybe I have to press down the old key to get the minus adjustment brush because I did go a little bit too far in some areas. But yeah, I do like the overall adjustments from before once again and after this minus clarity with the adjustment brush. And the thing that I want to quickly do before I go into the last local adjustment right here is crop the picture because I just noticed that there is a white line to the left here. Probably some artifact from the HDR, no big deal, but I definitely want to get rid of it. And while I'm at it, I'm also just going to straighten the horizon because it seems like it was off just a little bit. Alright, so now going into the rail filters, I'm going to use them for dodge and burning. And if you want to add dodge and burning, make sure your feather is at 100, you invert the mask. I know I keep repeating myself in every single video. And then I'm actually going to go a bit into the plus whites, a bit into the plus exposure, as well as add some warmth in the color right here. 
and I'm just gonna add a filter. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do exactly here as well, but I do think maybe I went a bit over top with the color. So the idea for Dodge Burning is obviously just increasing or decreasing the exposure for additional interest or and complexity and all of that. But I don't think there's really too much opportunity for that in this picture. Cause if you look at it, it's already pretty bright where it's supposed to be bright and these dark parts, it definitely wouldn't work just to make one part very bright that will look terrible. But it also doesn't really need to be even darker than before because the dark parts are already very dark. So what I'm just gonna do instead is go over this area with the, by the way, this is a nuclear power plant, one of the most beautiful ways I've ever seen one of those, but I do want to increase the whites a little bit, just so the attention gets even more drawn to the actual, you know, nuclear power plant, very weird thing to say, but additional, it really doesn't need any additional colors, I'm actually gonna reset that, and yeah, just increase the overall whites a bit and then just right click and duplicate the filter and maybe do the exact same thing with the smoke as well. Just in some areas right here and right click and duplicate again and make a very small filter over the bottom part of the smoke. And you know, probably these things you could also do with the adjustment brush, but I just prefer to do them with the rail filters. So then, you know what, let's actually make this part a little bit brighter as well, because I do want there to be kind of a line that leads you into the picture, and this bottom part is just a little bit too boring, a little bit too dark if you ask me. And I think that's already it, if I'm honest. It's definitely not the usual dodge and burning that I do, but for night pictures, you oftentimes don't have to. More if you would have maybe a lantern or something like that, then you could just increase that light and also add a reflection and all of that. But since these are all street and, you know, house lights, there's not really an opportunity for that kind of thing. So what I'm actually gonna say here that I'm done with the entire picture, I'm pretty happy with the result. And if we compare it from the before right here. Now, honestly, I do think it is not bad as a raw file, but at the end, it definitely looks way more interesting in terms of the sky, especially, and especially in terms of that differentiation from the warm light to the rest of the picture. And you know, I would have really loved to see some stars in the sky that would have added a lot more interest and a little additional element but unfortunately they were not visible. But even without the stars, I still think it's quite unique and quite interesting because it's not really every day that you see a nuclear power plant acting as an anchor point in a nightscape picture. But anyways, if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, you can of course subscribe, you can also leave a thumbs up, that is always hugely appreciated. But if you didn't like this video, you can also go ahead and give a thumbs down. That helps me to see which kind of videos I should make in the future and is equally appreciated. So I'm gonna stop talking. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.